Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Fankit. This is part 52 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about implementing custom paging in a grid view control that uses object data source control. With object data source control, it's possible to implement both default paging and custom paging. In part 51 of this video series, we discussed about implementing default paging. So what's the difference between default paging and custom paging? This is a very common ASP.NET interview question as well. With the default paging, all the rows are retrieved from the database every time we navigate to a different page within the grid view control. For example, let's say there are 10,000 rows in the database table. And then let's say, for example, on the grid view control, we have set the page size to three. When the grid view control loads, it's going to load all the 10,000 records from the database table. And then the grid view control will display the correct set of those three records. So if I navigate to a different page number, then again, when the web form posts back, it's still going to load all the 10,000 records from which the grid view control will display the correct set of three records for that page. So just imagine the amount of network traffic that goes on between the database server and the web server with default paging. But whereas with custom paging, we don't have this problem. With custom paging, we only retrieve the subset of rows that will be displayed in the grid view control. So for example, when we set the page size to three with custom paging, we only load the correct set of those three records, even if the underlying database table has got 100,000 records. So obviously, with custom paging, we get much better performance over default paging. However, when compared with default paging, custom paging is relatively complex to implement. In this video, we'll discuss about implementing custom paging. So obviously, to implement custom paging, the first thing to basically do is to write a stored procedure which is going to return us the correct set of records. So for example, if we have a grid view control whose page size is set to three, and if I am on the first page of the grid view control, then you know we need a stored procedure which is going to return uh, the records from one to three. And when we navigate to the second page, it should return records from four to six. So basically, if we have to design a stored procedure you know, which can do that, what are the two things that we need to provide to the stored procedure? Obviously, the starting row index and then the maximum number of rows that we need. So if we set the page size to three, then, you know, and we are on the first page, the start row index will be one and maximum rows is three, so we get three rows. When I'm on the second page, you know, the start row index will be four and the page size is again three, so I get four, five, and six. So first, let's see how to design the stored procedure. So for this demo, we'll be using this table TBL employee. Within this table, I have got these eight rows. I have the stored procedure already implemented. And if you look at the stored procedure, it has got two input parameters, the start index and the maximum number of rows. So obviously, if I am on the first page, the start index is going to be one the start row index and I need three rows. So if I pass in one comma three, so start index is one, maximum rows is three. I execute this, look at that. I get the first set of three records. Now, when I am on the second page, the start row index will be four and obviously the maximum rows will again be three because the page size is always going to be three within the grid view control. Okay, so when I set this to four, Look at that, I get the correct set of, you know, three records, four, five, six. And when I navigate to the third page, the start index is going to be seven, and the page size will still remain three. But then remember, this table has got only eight records. So the last page will only get two records, seven and eight. Okay, so let's now, you know, inspect the stored procedure, you know, how did we implement this? So if you look at this, this is very straightforward. All we are doing here is we are using row number function to achieve this. Okay, if you are new to row number function, we discussed about this in SQL Server video tutorial. So please watch that video. So select row number over, we are ordering it by employee ID. And then for the row number, we are giving an alias as row number. And then employee ID name, gender and city are the columns from TBL employee table. So if you look at this inner query, it's very straightforward. I execute this, I get all the rows, employee ID name, gender, and city. I also have a row number. So this inner query results, you know, we give it a name. This is the derived table, employees. So if you look at this employees, we'll have, you know, this row number and then the rest of the 
TBL employee table columns. And look at the outer query. We are saying select employee ID, name, gender, and city. We are only selecting one, two, and three, you know, employee ID, name, gender, and city, because these are the columns that belong to TBL employee table and which we want to show to the end user. We don't want to be showing row number. That's why I am only selecting the required columns from this derived table employees, which will also contain row number. Okay, and then look at what I'm doing. I am filtering based on that row number, where row number is greater than or equal to start index. So if we pass, you know, start row index as one, so row number greater than or equal to one, and then row number is less than start index plus maximum rows. So what is the sum of start index plus maximum rows? One plus three is four, and row number should be less than four, meaning I get records from one to three. And similarly, if we pass, you know, start row index as four, and the page size as three, that's the maximum rows, uh, you know, so obviously row number is greater than or equal to four, so it's gonna start at four, and then row number is less than start index plus maximum rows, which is going to be four plus three. So less than seven, so I get four, five, six, the correct set of, you know, records for the second page. Okay, so pretty simple and straightforward. Now you may be wondering, why are we computing row number? Why can't I use employee ID to do this check? Okay, just imagine if an employee resigns or for some reason we have deleted an employee record from this table, you know, we will not have employee IDs in sequence. So that's the reason why we can't use employee ID, you know, for this um, where clause. That's the reason why we are computing this row number and using it. All right, so obviously we are done with designing the stored procedure. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. Since we want to use object data source control, obviously we need to build our employee data access layer. So let me add a class file to this project. Add class, and let's call this employee data access layer.cs. And then to encapsulate employee information, we obviously need to design an employee class. I have this already implemented, and if you look at this class, it's a straightforward class with four auto-implemented properties, employee ID, name, gender, and city. And then with an employee data access layer class, we need to write a method which is going to retrieve the, you know, basically execute that stored procedure and retrieve the correct set of records that we need. So obviously we need to write some ADO.NET code. So first, let's go ahead and import the required ADO.NET namespaces. And then let's write a method which is going to invoke the stored procedure SP get employees. And again, just to speed things up, I have this method already implemented. So let me copy and paste this method within our employee data access layer. So if you look at this method, it's very straightforward. The name of the method get employees, and notice the signature of the method. It has got two input parameters: start row index and maximum rows these two input parameters of this method will be passed as values for these stored procedure parameters. So let's inspect this method. So what are we doing? This method is actually returning a list of employees and then it has got two input parameters, start row index and maximum rows. And the first thing we are doing, we are creating a variable of type list employee. Using the configuration manager class, we are reading the connection string. Using that connection string, we are preparing the SQL connection object. And then we are preparing the SQL command here. Notice the command, it's SP get employees. It's nothing but the name of the stored procedure that we have just implemented. And since that is a stored procedure, we are setting the command type to stored procedure. And since this stored procedure has two input parameters, we are specifying those two parameters here. So we are creating a parameter object, and then we are specifying the parameter name as at start index. That's what is the name of the parameter and then we are specifying the parameter value. So what is that parameter value? Start row index. So where is this coming from? This is coming as an input parameter into this method. Okay, and then finally we are adding that parameter object to the command object. Similarly, we are doing, you know, adding the maximum rows parameter which the, this stored procedure has. Okay, so we have added the parameters, open the connection, execute the command, loop through each row, create an employee object, add that object to the employee list, and then finally return the list. So obviously, this employee data access layer now has a method which is going to return the correct set of records that the grid view control needs. But then, 
you know this method will only return three records okay to the grid view control now the grid view control somehow should determine you know the page numbers here so how many page numbers should the grid view control show how does it know that unless and until it knows the total number of pages and the page size it really can't compute the number of page numbers to display within this pager area of the grid view control so obviously somehow we have to tell the grid view control how many total rows are there in tbl employee table and obviously to do that we need another method which is going to return just the count of the total number of rows in tbl employee table I have this method again already implemented so let me copy this and paste that into this employee data access layer and if you look at this method look at the return type it's an integer because we just need the count of total employees and using the configuration manager class we are reading the connection string we are building the SQL connection object using that connection string and look at the SQL command select count of star from TBL employee and this command will return a scalar value that's why we are executing scalar we are invoking execute scalar method and if you look at the return type it's an object so we need to type cast it to be of type integer and we are returning that back okay so our employee data access layer has got two methods the required two methods the first method is going to return the correct set of employee records the second method will return us the total number of records in TBL employee table all right at this point let's build the solution so that the employee data access layer is compiled and then let's get to this web form 1.aspx let's drag and drop a grid view control let's auto format this let's choose brown sugar as the scheme let's drag and drop um, object data source control onto the web form let's configure this let's select our business object which is going to be employee data access layer that's present in demo namespace click next choose your select method which is going to be get employees and notice this this method has got two input parameters start row index and maximum rows now when I click next it's going to ask me to define the parameter values okay at this point I'm not going to define the parameters I'm just going to click finish and then let me associate this object data source control with this grid view control and then let's enable paging and we get the default page size of 10 let's set that to 3 okay at this point let's flip the web form to the source mode and then notice the configuration of this object data source control okay so here you know the type is employee data access layer and it this employee data access layer has got get employees that's what is going to be our select method and this get employees method has got two input parameters right start row index and maximum rows and you know those are specified as select parameters now I'm going to get rid of them from here the select parameters and instead of those two select parameters I need to specify you know what is the first parameter it's start row index so start row index parameter name so what is the name of the parameter that contains the start row index it's nothing but start row index in this method so we need to specify that here and then the next parameter is the maximum rows okay and we need to define that specify that to the um, object data to source control so maximum rows parameter name what is that that is maximum rows so let's copy and paste that here okay and then look at this within the grid view control we have enabled paging but we need to enable paging with an object data source control as well so even object data source control has got this attribute enable paging so let's set that to true and finally you know the object data source control you know this is what will serve the data to the grid view control so what is the method which is going to return the total count to the grid view control you know obviously we have this method get total count so we need to specify the name of this method to our object data source control and to do that we have another attribute called select count method so what's the name of that method 
it is get total count. That's it. We are done. So let me run this now and see if our custom paging works as expected. So when the grid view control loads, it has to show three records on the first page. But notice this. We have a problem here. It's only displaying two records on the page. Now, if you remember, on our grid view control, we have set the page size to three. So it should actually display three records within the grid view control. Okay? But it's displaying two records. Why is that? That's because, you know, look at the stored procedure. If we send start indexes one and then when I execute this procedure I get the correct set of records but for some reason if I pass zero as the start index and then execute that stored procedure what's going to happen it returns two records and that's what is exactly happening because this object data source control is sending zero as the start index by default Okay, so to correct this, there are several ways, and the easiest way is basically within the stored procedure. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to increment start index by one. So set start index is equal to at start index plus one. Let's alter the stored procedure. All right, let's reload this page now. Look at that. Now I am page number one and it shows me the correct you know, set of records. I go to page number two, I get records from four to six. I go to page number three, I get seven and eight records. Now, when I am on page number one, though there are eight records within the database table, it's going to retrieve only these three records from one to three. So obviously this is much better than default paging. All right. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.